Good morning, it's Wednesday, September the 29th, and you're watching Agoracom Small Cap News TV. I'm your host, Paul Kondakos. Agoracom TV is a daily, fast-paced show, bringing you the best press releases, along with the halts at the open so that you can open profit from them, and potentially find your next great small cap investment. Folks, hopefully you're comfortable because we've got a lot of press releases to go through this morning. I've got a record six press releases, a record at least for me, and I've got four halts to report on. It means things are back in full swing. The resource sector is really kicking. Gold is above 1300 So sit back, relax, and let's get down to business. Our lead story comes out of a company called Fire River uh, Gold. They trade on the TSX Venture under the symbol FAU. Disclaimer time, they are an Agoracom client. I'm sure if you're a regular of the show, you've heard about Fire River and the great progress that they've been making. Well, this is no exception. We've got more great news coming out of the company. They're announcing the results of a preliminary economic assessment for leaching historic tailings at Nixon Fork Gold Mine, which is located in Alaska. Now, the preliminary economic assessment, or PEA for short, is for the completion of a 250 ton per day cyanidation circuit and the implementation of leaching. Now, I've got some uh, net present values uh, for you from the, the PEA, or the Preliminary Economic Assessment. We've got $3.3 million net present value and 24% internal rate of return, and that's with gold at $1,000. The net present value increases to $7.7 .7 million and 48% internal rate of return with gold at $1,200. And we know gold's trading in around $1,300. So on a little more aggressive scale, uh, the net present value would be $14.2 million for this project and an 81% internal rate of return with gold at $1,500 per ounce. It's not out of the question. We're at $1,300. And I know some gentlemen are calling for even higher gold. But nonetheless, these are the three different valuations we have. The tailings pond contains approximately 23,000 ounces of gold in the indicated category. And in the inferred, we've got 11,400. So in total, we've got about 34,000 ounces of gold in the tailings pond. So great news coming out of Fire River. Hopefully they will be producing very shortly. A little bit about the company. They're a near-term production company with an experienced technical team focused on bringing its flagship project, the Nixon Fork Gold Mine, back into production within <laughs> the next 12 months. The company is last at 55 cents, high of 75 cents, low of 34 cents, market cap of approximately $32 million. Congratulations to Harry Barr and the rest of the great team at Fire River. Moving on to our next company, UC Resources. They trade on the TSX Venture under the symbol UC. Disclaimer time once again, they are an Agoracom client. It just so happens that the headlines this morning are dominated by Agoracom clients, but the news is great nonetheless. Uh, the company is reporting that their mill at La Yesca, which is located in Mexico, has now been restarted using diesel generator electric power. The generators were brought in because they found it to be necessary after uh, production testing had commenced at La Yesca a few weeks ago. However, they found the power supply was unreliable during the rainy season, so they had to bring in their own electrical generators. They're happy to announce that they are now back on schedule, uh, aiming to get production up and running once again. The company expects to precipitate gold and silver within days, as demonstrated at the initial test period prior to the power issues from which numerous door pucks were poured. Now, the company aims to move towards commercial production as quickly as possible and uh, should be at a target of 220 tons per day within two weeks if all goes well. A little bit about UC Resources. They're an active explorer of base metals and chromite in the Falls Lake area, uh, as well as an explorer and a near-term producer of precious metals in Mexico. Companies last at 10 and a half cents, high of 13 and a half, low of seven cents, market cap of 16 and a half million dollars. Uh, that's it for UC. Moving on to the U.S. side, I've got Tinyan uh, Pharmaceutical. They trade on the Amex under the symbol TPI. They're a bio biopharmaceutical company that specializes in patented biopharmaceutical, modernized traditional uh, Chinese me medicine, branded generics, and other pharmaceuticals. They're announcing their fiscal year end uh, for June 30th, 2010. I've got some highlights, which include uh, revenue up 49% to $64 million dollars. Gross profit was at $33 million, which is up 55% year over year. Gross margin increased to 52%. Uh, and we've got net income rose 52% to $12 million, and that's year over year. So obviously great numbers here coming out of Tianyin. Tian Yin. Uh, and they're also announced that they have cash and cash equivalents were $27 million as of June 30th, 2010. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Their last at 269, high of 525, low of 249, market cap of 72 million dollars. Moving on to our next company, China ACM. They're a former Agoracom client. They trade on the NASDAQ under the symbol CADC. The company is a provider of ready mix concrete and related technical services in China. And with the infrastructure boom in China, China ACM is definitely poised to benefit. They're announcing their audited financial results for the year ended June 30th, 2010. I've got some highlights for you, which include revenue increased 134% year over year to $93 million. Non-GAAP EBITDA rose 28% year over year to $22 million. Net income available to common shareholders rose 11% year over year to $12 million. And we've got an order backlog, which they claim to be a record $60 million, so quite significant. And they've got a pipeline of $33 million, also very significant. Uh, finally, the company is announcing that they have $24 million in working capital as of June 30th, 2010. They're last at 326 high of 850 low of 295 so they're trading in and around their 52 week low market cap of 54 million dollars now bear with me folks two more press releases but i guarantee they're worth your while china precision steel they trade on the nasdaq under the symbol cpsi they're a precision steel processing company they're also announcing financial results for 2010 uh, the period ending june 30th We've got financial highlights, which include revenue increased 44% to a record $110 million. Gross profit was $10 million with a 9.3% gross margin. And finally, net income increased to $5.6 million, and that's up from a net loss of $400,000. So these are the kind of turnaround stories that I love to get involved with. Companies lost at $1.86, high of $2.98, low of $1.26, mark cap of $86 million. And finally, we've got Tech Precision. They trade on the bulletin board under the symbol TPCS. They're a manufacturer of large-scale, high-precision machine metal fabrication. The company is announcing that it's received an order of $3.9 million for combined materials and labor purchase from one of its largest customers. They don't actually name the customer. They do say it's a recognized leader in the solar energy equipment market. Companies last at $0.88. Cents. High of $1.20, low of $0.60, cents, market cap of approximately $12.5 million. That's it for the press releases, folks. ton of great news coming out of the markets this morning. Moving on to the halts, I've got Coal Corp Mining on the venture under the symbol CCJ. Uh, they are, it's a cease trade order, failure to file, so don't even worry about that one. Lexum Explorations trades on the venture under the symbol LEX, halted pending news. Peninsula Resources on the venture, halted pending news under the symbol PNU. And finally, First Gold Exploration uh, on the venture under the symbol EFG, halted pending news. That's a wrap for today's show. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a tremendous day. Make sure to join us again here tomorrow. We've got more great press releases on the halts at the open for you.